It's Saturday, and how many days of the week do you get to talk to a real-life panda? Welcome to the Fantasy NBA Today podcast, a sports ethos presentation presented by yours truly, Aaron Bruski, and usually uh, Dr. A, Steve Alexander, and sometimes the inventor of fantasy basketball, Rick Kamla, but those two dudes aren't here. So it's just me and the great Mike Passador of Sports Ethos, and uh, yeah, it, it's pretty awesome to have a panda on the show. So uh, quickly before we get into things with Panda and I bring him in here, I want to give you guys a quick update about how we're doing our shows. we got two episodes per day now, just one on the weekend, but two episodes per day during the week. And uh, we'll have a bunch of special segments, some buy low, some sell high. Uh, the week ahead, which, which is actually what we're going to talk about here today with Panda. And then we'll be live every morning, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And uh, then Doc and Rick are doing Sports Ethos After Dark Monday through Thursday. So, I mean, you guys have a ton of content to consume and from some of the greats in the industry. So uh, that's going to be great. And uh, real quick, let's shout out our sponsor, basketball fans. It's that time of year again. The NBA is back from opening tip-off to buzzer beaters. This season, every game matters. Bet Online has you covered with the best odds, biggest promos, and live in-game betting on all of your favorite teams, along with every stat, matchup, breakdown, and live odds to bet on during the game. And it's not just the NBA. Bet Online has odds on everything from football to MLB playoffs, NHL, and political props. Head to the website today to get in the action with America's most trusted site for online wagering. Bet Online, the game starts here. Panda. Panda, we're talking yes. about. Uh, we're t- we're first, I got to get a lot off my chest, folks. So, Panda. Drafts right next to me in the vaunted 30 deep league. So when I did the draw to see who picked where, I saw your name and I wanted to throw and or break things because I know you're, first of all, you've won 30 deep twice. That's an amazing feat. Winning it once is an amazing, amazing feat, but winning it twice is an amazing feat. And your knowledge of the the 150 to 350, 400, 500 player range is as good as it is in the industry. And I was like, eh, it's this guy's going to take my guys. And then I knew it was going to happen. And then I had this choice. It was like, I forget who I got to pick. It was like Keegan Murray or something, you know, and, and I got Keegan ranked at like 40 and nine cat or something. And I'm like, okay, I got to take Keegan. And I just, I was like, is he going to take Keon Ellis? Is he going to do that to me? And, you know, everybody passed Keon Ellis and then boom, you take Keon Ellis right before me at like one, whatever, 140 or 150. Very mad at you. I was extraordinarily mad at you. And then with the last pick, I believe, you took Jonathan Mogbo. And it's it's not fair because, one, you're in Toronto, so you know about things. Two, you read the news and you follow the Toronto beat writers who have been sort of all over Mogbo from the finish or from the, from the start. And I thought, man, I'm going to get Mogbo. I really am. And right before me, you select Jonathan Mogbo. So I'd like to say that I hate you, and I wish nothing but ill will upon you. And welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good. I'm riding the wave of mobile mania. So we're we're all we're all square over here. You know, Um, I don't think. um, Oh, sorry. I'm stepping on you. No, no. I I just I'm reveling in uh, my you know whatever pick that is, two hundred and. Three hundred and seventy-nine. Because <laughs> there was three hundred and fifty, I think you took Mogbo at. Well, he was pick seventeen of round twelve, so three three forty-seven. Yeah, yeah. I was so sure I was getting Mogbo, but with the exception in my mind, is like it's like uh, Panda's going to get Mogbo. But um, so it's been interesting. Like I, in Toronto, I feel like Mogbo mania is going pretty well. Um. I planted a flag with Mogbo. So I saw the film for the first time in season. I didn't watch it in the preseason. I, I really should have, because if, if I'd seen it, I would have probably had Mogbo in somewhere in the top 50, 150 somewhere. Um, because I haven't seen this combo of speed and strength and everything. We could talk, I want to get your takes on all of this stuff as well, because I think you're as qualified as anybody to talk about this. But um, when I saw that, I was like, oh my God. And now, you know, he had a really big game followed by a nine minute game. And, and I was kind of at that point, I, even in the nine minute game, I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Um, everybody go get Mog- Mogbo. It's basically my position. I don't know if it's going to work, but you just got to go do it. Then 
Scotty Barnes goes down and we got a, a decent little Mogbo game in the last one. Where are you at with Mogbo? Like from start to finish, let's make this a little bit of a Mogbo episode. Oh, perfect. Wow. I, I'm levitating. Uh, no, man, Adam, see, see where it goes. I mean, he's probably going to start for the duration of Scotty Barnes's absence. And um, look, on one hand, it, it sucks for the team because you can't really evaluate anything that happens without Scotty Barnes around. Like it doesn't hold too much long, long-term weight just because he's like baked into everything that's going to happen in the next few years. Um, but it's a great opportunity for, for him to establish himself and to get these valuable reps um, that will help him be productive even when Scotty does return and he shifts back into more of a natural role. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily drop like anyone on your roster for him, but you know, like your last two or three guys probably not going to have as much long-term upside unless you just had a great draft and we, you know, that's totally possible. But uh, I think most people should be kicking the tires at least and, and seeing where it goes. I, you know, like you said, he's got the attributes, uh, Kind of the, the numbers from college were fantastic, and that didn't really include him shooting three pointers at all. Um, he's looked okay at that so far, and then just even then, like the impact metrics from college, he was just like so impactful. Um, so you know, even even with some flaws in his game and, and some rough edges, like he's just a good player that's going to help. And this is a team that's in position to accept any good player that can help. So um, I, I'm a fan. We'll see where yeah. it goes. And, and let's let's deconstruct this a little bit. So like in the tanking, let's kind of take tanking and just sort of crack that. Do you think Toronto is like, when do you think the tank starts for them? Like, is the tank already starting? Is it going to be a third of the season, a half the season, two thirds of the season? What do you think? I mean, it might be starting already just because no Scotty, but uh, they're getting pretty good minutes out of a lot of the roster. That I don't think people are understanding yet. Like, Davion Mitchell hasn't done too much in the box score, but he's looked good. Uh, Jamal Shedd's been fantastic, the backup point guard now. He's yeah, kind he of has the been. Same, same old as Mitchell, just like they dig in and get after it, not afraid to stick their nose in, in the dirty areas. So it, it's been a lot of fun to watch them. Grady Dick's been great. He's way more than a catch-and-shoot guy. He's driving into the paint, finishing over like Evan Mobley and stuff. He's not afraid to do it. He can put the ball on the floor. Um, I mean, even RJ Barrett looks a lot better than he did in New York in this offensive system. So, um, to me, I don't know if it's going to be a hard tank early on. I think their goal is to be fun, but bad, which is being accomplished. And it gets a lot easier to do that without Scotty Barnes. Um, to me, the big like red flag indicator is what happens with Jakob Pertl. Like if he ever gets hurt for any length of time, that's when the tank starts. Mm, the yeah. defense totally collapses without him. I mean, the last game in Charlotte, he was like 20 and 16 or something, and he was like plus 23 in 35 minutes. So they were, you know, minus <laughs> like minus 38 in, in his nine minutes off the floor or whatever it was. It was some crazy split. Uh, and basically, anytime he's off the floor, they just start bleeding points. So he's, to me, the real indicator of like, all right, this is kind of when it, the shoot's getting pulled. Um, but I think like if they ever want to just really tank it, it, they'll shut him down and everything else will just sort of happen naturally. Yeah. Um, and I'm asking this question to bring it back to Mogbo. And again, we're going to get into the look ahead of next week. And we're going to talk about guys other than Mogbo in Toronto. But Mogbo, I think, is going to become a topic here. It's it's already it should be a topic. And, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to be out front with this. Um, you know, anybody can kind of once it's already kind of baked into concrete anybody can say oh yeah you should add them to your team at that point in time but you know if you're in a competitive situation and you got to beat other analysts and things like that you know i think you got to kind of get out the crystal ball and see if you can project something um the tanking situation is good to understand because again if if they're tanking i don't see let me ask you this question if they're tanking is there any reason to not have mogbo on the floor no i mean yeah He's, he, you know, why not? Why not see what he can do? I mean, he he put up huge numbers as the featured guy across his long and winding NCAA journey. Um, if the Raptors are without their actual like expensive guys, there's there's no reason not to see what he can do. Um, especially since there are some lingering questions about how he adjusts from his featured role into what he's going to be in the NBA. Um, you know, it's unlikely that if he becomes the guy that just gets to take all the shots and drives into the paint on his own at this level. But uh, it's worth finding out if he can. And then if not, you know, he's got to learn how to play a little bit differently. And uh, that's a good opportunity for him to, to get those 
those reps and, and build that experience. So, yeah, yeah. I think he's going to be a fixture unless he gets hurt. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a couple of, uh, back to the tanking question. Um, I want to just say that I think that Toronto might sneak up on some teams like the, especially with Scotty Barnes, like with Barnes out, that's a huge deal. Maybe they can't win anything at all, but like this, the, the, the other players, especially the new players, the younger players, they're competitive. Like they're, they're, they're like, sheet is quick. Um, you know, battle, he has a nice shot. Like he, I mean, that, that looks good. Obviously Mogbo, I'm super high on, um, you know, Agbaji is out yep, there. He's looked really good too. He can actually shoot now. It's crazy. There's, there's, there's something to be said about this team, not just being total crap, you know, especially as you have RJ Barrett, you add back in Emmanuel quickly. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if they might win more games than they would like somehow and then um, not accomplish the goal of tanking, if that is indeed the goal, which I did think the comments from Jakob Pertl early in the season, in the preseason, did to me suggest that at least like he's looking at it and saying, hey, we're not really trying to win here. <laughs> so, uh, that yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's apparent that they're not going to win the championship, but I do think that they have enough competent players and I think they had a really nice draft class here. Um, if opponents don't take them seriously, they will end up beating more people than they probably should. But um, like you said, they're missing quickly. Obviously they're missing Barnes right now. That's kind of your, your two most important players long-term at this point in time. You're also missing Bruce Brown who kind of papers over a lot of second unit issues that have popped up so far. Uh, Kelly Olenek, same, same deal, you know, replacing Bruno Fernando with Kelly Olenek in the rotation will probably help when that's time. And they haven't even had Jacoby Walter, who was their first round pick. So, um, you know, the guys they've plugged in have been competitive and they've been playing hard, but like they're also missing four or five guys that should probably be playing every night when, when available. So um, it's just a matter of making all the pieces fit, but you know, I, I see reasons for optimism. Um, it, it's, you know, to me, that's why I think Pirtle, his status is kind of the big tanking indicator because Without him, no matter who else is there, it all kind of collapses. Like, they just can't defend well enough to keep from losing. So um, he's kind of the guy you, you really need to watch for when it comes to them just waving the flag on the season. Now, let's do this. Uh, that would be the last thing on Mogwo, and we'll move into some other topics here. So, like, what can people expect if – so Mogbo, you know, in college – You've done way more college research on Mogwo than I have, by the way. Like, I think I know he was a great rebounder in college. I presume he was good defensively since that's some of the most amazing stuff that I've seen in a while is like him covering Anthony Edwards the other day, his, his, uh, you know, your defensive stance and being able to kind of pivot back and, and move your hips and open one way, open another and stay centered and keep your body in front. And, and all of those things that are the, that make up good defense. Like Anthony went right. He went left. He went right again. He went left again. Most guys are tripping over their feet and they're falling, and he's already on his way to the hoop and he's dunking. Magwa just sat there and just, I'm going to open this way, I'll open this way, open this way. I got you covered every which way. Um, what, uh, what, what, what should folks expect in this scenario that they start tanking or maybe Magwa just earns the minutes and, and if he gets up to 20, 25, hell, 30 minutes per game down the road, what should folks be expecting out of Magwa? whether it's basketball, real basketball, or fantasy? If he gets up like 25-plus, I think you're looking at kind of low-end double-doubles with the occasional like 20-point game and then, you know, one and a half to maybe two defensive stats a night, hopefully on good percentages. Uh, I think the percentages will depend on who else is on the floor with them. Obviously, it gets easier if you have the expensive guys, but if he's kind of tasked with playing the same role he did at a – San Francisco last season, then, you know, his percentages will suffer. But I mean, last year, I, I just pulled it up 28.9 minutes, 14.2 points, 10.1 rebounds, 3.6 assists, 1.6 steals, 0 0.8 blocks on 636 from the field. No real three point attempts, which is, you know, obviously adding to the, to the game. Um, but, you know, there's a lot to like about those numbers, even if it's not a one to one translation. Uh, he's going to be must start if if the Raptors shed a lot of uh, a lot of the veterans from the rotation at some point, I just don't see how he doesn't fall into at least getting like, you know, 12 points, seven rebounds, maybe something else a night. That's university of San Francisco. Yes. Is that correct? 
Okay. Yes. So I got, he I got started. People. Here we go. We're gonna do the mobile. Uh, mobile mania is coming for you, brother. Um, <laughs> he started at Independence Community College, then Northeastern Oklahoma A and M, the powerhouse, uh, uh, Missouri State, and then San Francisco. So he's a well-traveled man and is now won the hearts and minds of at least two of us. Love fantasy basketball. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, sixteen point six minutes per game. Oh, I got people at University of San Francisco, so that's why I, I bring that there up. But uh. Yep. 16.6 minutes per game this year for the Raptors. Uh, 1.2 steals, 1.0 blocks, 7.6 points, 3.8 boards, 1.8 assists. So basically 8, 4, and 2 with a steal and a block and some change per game in those 16 minutes. So to flirt with two defensive stats, in 86% of his free throws, by the way. Anyway, um, Producer Andre Limos adds that um, I love how you guys are over there trying to claim Mogbo, but somehow he's on my roster in our internal Roto League. What a shot fired by Andre, who who now has to edit out at least one reference to himself in this episode. That makes me happy. I'll keep going to edit it out. later. Yeah, I'll keep running yeah. Out. Um, okay. So Mogbo, I personally just think you got it, he's a luxury stash, but I think that. I, I mean, you got to have a stacked team, in my opinion, to not take this on because you got three weeks of ramp here with Scotty Barnes not um, playing, and it could be more, right? Like we don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically, you get three weeks of ramp to kind of see what they're going to do with him, and maybe they'll just keep him at twenty minutes per game or even seventeen. And even though seventeen minutes, hey, if he gets what he gets right now, I don't have that up in front of me, but let me pull that up right now. That's um a decent little chunk of fantasy value, even in this, this smaller output here. Yeah. He's a, he's a top 100 guy right now in nine. Well, cat leagues. Here's the other thing though. Like this roster kind of needs him. Um, I know a lot was made in the previous couple of years about like vision six, nine, where everyone on the floor is like six, eight to six, 10 and long and athletic. And it, you know, it, it didn't work for a variety of reasons, but like after last year's transactions, you look at the roster and you're like, man, they could use someone who's like six eight who can defend a couple <laughs> positions. Like they could use like an OG Ananobi, you know. Um, so sure enough, here's Mobo at, at like six seven and a half who has is it Mobo? Is switching it Mobo? across. I, is I've it always heard it as Mobo, but I'm willing to accept the Mogbo. Well, you know how I roll, guys. I, I usually don't get it right. I've been called a Mogbo, so Mogbo is probably correct. We'll get Andre. I don't know. I, I interpret the G as silent, but. Who somehow stole him from us? I, I'm going to claim workloads. That's that's how he, that's how he beats me to the punch there. Um, yeah, I think like I don't see how they keep him off the floor because yeah, I mean they just, just need, need a guy of his profile, like so makes sense on the floor. So we got no help from the phonetic spelling offered by Mobo Mobile. I'm claiming that that's Mobo. Yeah, is that M Mobo? Mobo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, I, like Mogbo. I like Mogbo better. Well, I don't know why. Like, I feel like you could shout Mogbo forever and it'd be better as Mogbo, but it's Mobo. <laughs> Mobo? Mobo. Mobo. Any other angles surrounding the now named Jonathan Mobo? No. Nah, uh, take a shot, see where it goes. You're going to have three weeks of passable production. And then if it becomes more, you're made in shade. And if not, yeah. then you find the next hotness three weeks from now. You know, it's pretty cut and dry to me yeah but you know what here's the other thing it's not cut and dry to anybody else out there i don't think anybody's on this boat like i'm not the seeing mo the, the, the mo boat exactly i'm not seeing it out there when i bid for him last week in in fab there were two bids out of like 10 leagues i bid a decent chunk of change i didn't want to miss this ride i could have gotten him for a buck I could have gotten him for 12 bucks at the, the, the highest cost it would have cost me out of a thousand fab dollars. And, um, you know, people are just kind of out there, not even, they don't even know his name. And so yeah, I mean, it's just early in the season, you get people who love their own roster too much to like get in on the juice. Mm -hmm. It's like, Oh, like everyone I drafted is going to outperform their draft slot. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to risk that yet. It's like, mm, sometimes you should, sometimes the guy at the bottom of your roster just kind of stinks, you know, like take a shot live a little and and I, i've got to say man i've not seen defense 
played, and here I am watching Keon Ellis all the time. I don't think, I mean, Keon's amazing. Mobo, like I just a man his size, like being able to cover that much ground laterally with his strength. I mean, he kind of makes Scotty Barnes look small. Childhood best friends, by the way. Fun fact for the I did not know that. Yeah. yeah. And that actually is a very big deal because you want to keep your star player happy. And if your childhood best friend now has the, the game to to make it, that's very interesting. It's yeah, it's, all the way from what was it, Independence Community College. That's in your knowledge of, of the, the history there is impressive. Heck of a ride. All right, let's get to something a little more mainstream. Well, hold on. Now. If anyone out there has attended Independence Community College, let us know. Yeah, I would. I would like to uh, get get the tips on on what you saw in Mobo. What what and the development next? has been? Uh, let's see here. Okay, Jared Allen. Jared Allen. Yeah, is destroying the league. What you read? Uh, Cavs look good. Was my big overarching storyline. They look really good. Uh, Kenny Atkinson came into that interview with the plan and uh, it's elevated Evan Mobley offensively, but in turn, it has also elevated Jared Allen, which is not often something that you think would happen. Um, look, definite sell high opportunity because he's not going to be a first round player this year, but man, Cavs, Cavs look really good. So uh, if, if you can finagle like a certified top 30 guy for Jared Allen, more power to you. Um, I'm wary of early trades, and I think a lot of people are, except for the people that just love making trades more than they love winning. Um, like early on, nobody's, nobody's throwing you a life preserver. You know, you're only getting anchors from other people at this point. So any offer you get should be treated skeptically unless it's from the guy in your league that you know is just a maniac. So uh, I think spinning Jared Allen is like, oh, you know, he's got first round potential. It's going to be a tough sell, but. If you can do it, go for it. You know, don't ask, don't get. So uh, try to sell high, but honestly, even if he cools off, it looks like he's going to have a shot to outperform his draft slot. So, you know, if you can't get anything certifiably better, you might as well ride with it and see where it goes. I've faded Jared Allen for two years now, and it looked real bad. Last season, uh, was it ankle, I believe, in the beginning of the season? Yeah, and he missed. So uh, he didn't... Was, what was it? I think it, I think it was ankle. might have been knee. But yeah, it was literally the first five games of the season and then perfect attendance until the playoffs when he had a rib contusion. Yeah, and and really just like blew the socks off my projection. And then um, so I'm, my big concern has been the lateral quickness. I don't think it matters. This I th I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, I did not see a thing and it's making me mad, but whatever, you know, you live with it. Like the Cavs might be so good that what he does well is wide open for him. You know, you, you, you get so much good offensive action out of, I mean, you want to call Evan Mobley the second best player. You want to call Darius Garland the second best player offensively. I don't care which one you want to put where. That's three dudes that are crushing it. And, you know, if you're just sitting there and and and, and you're uh, Jared Allen, you you just basically do whatever you want at that point. I didn't see that coming. and And maybe that's, Maybe that's the effect here is that his stat set is so good that, you know, from an efficiency standpoint, that when he can play free without, you know, anybody in his way, he's just going to get you that great percentage. He's going to get you the points and the boards and all of the other stuff that comes with a good team sort of beating up on other bad teams. Um, what's your projection for him the rest of the season? Hmm. That's a tough one. See, um, I mean, look, he's going to slow down from this. I think he can be top 50 just kind of by staying in his lane as long as he doesn't get hurt. That's kind what of where I'm settling. What about top 40? So you think top 50? Yeah, I'm, I'm conservative in my, in my estimation. So yeah. I always kind of bump it down like five to 10 spots from, you know, where your guts at. I think he might actually be just to be like, all right, you know, He'll cool off. Like, even if he goes into the tank for a while, he'll still up in the top 50 as long as, like, he's raised his baseline level. So, I mean, top 40 is not out of the realm of possibility because, like, you know, I think we talked about this in the, in the draft season, but, like, that second, third round of guys is just a lot of people who were drafted to play at their very best, kind of beyond the level of what we've seen before. Um, 
so I think a lot of people with ADPs in like the, the like mid twenties and beyond into like the fifties are going to not meet that. And I think Jared Allen is primed to kind of leapfrog a bunch of those guys who got drafted just too aggressively. Yeah. They don't pay us to, to tell you what happened after the fact. I think uh, th that's always the fun thing is when, when people are like, Hey, go add a guy, you know? And, and it's like, well, no, that already happened three weeks ago because yeah. Somebody had to jump and predict. And, and and the fact that you got him at like top 40, I think in your gut, I think that's that's good advice for folks to look at because it's very tempting to say, okay, maybe the level is risen here. Maybe the level's risen to top 30. I mean, some people might be over the over the moon with this and say, okay, now the level's top 20. But top 40 is probably the right answer there. And and with the fast start of five games, you know, maybe that looks like top 35 at the end of the season. Um, if he plays all the games, it'll look even better. So yep. uh, really interesting stuff there. Let's talk about Buddy he uh, Healed. Oh, what happened there? I caught a hanger. <laughs> Buddy Healed. Uh, what's up with Buddy Healed for you? Do you he think that he shouldn't got... like crazy? That's what's yeah. up. What's the, what's the outlook here? Yeah, I'd roster him. I mean, this, I, I've always liked the stat set. If you can hit a lot of three pointers and do it on like a minimum average, typically plus efficiency mark from the field, like that's. Have that's, you looked up what his production level is? Oh, it's, it's heading stupid. into the show. It's stupid. I know that he had like 18 threes in his first four games or something. It was crazy. Um, and it, mm -hmm. like it didn't matter the, the game state or the lineups he was with. It was just like Buddy Heald second on the team in shots. It, 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 like, if you're just throwing dark, where do you think? What do you think his um, per game rank is? Per game, I don't know. Let's call him twenty-two. Okay. Am I right? I think it's twenty-one. Oh, imagine if I got that right. Yeah. That's. I, I mean, I would have done a backflip, but you guys wouldn't have been able to see it. I think, buddy, he'll just produces in fantasy leagues. That's. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, he's it, perpetually right? undervalued. They need him. Like, you know, they're, they're hell bent on shooting thing. threes, by the way. Yeah. Like, that's all they talk about in Golden State is wanting to make up Clay Thompson's three point shooting. Well, that's not that hard to do anymore. They hate, hate to say it, but. Oh, what do you mean? Clay's had a fast start until the last two games. <laughs> yeah, until the last 50% of the schedule. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's. Uh, well, let, let me ask you about Clay Thompson since we're talking about him. Like, are you thinking Clay Thompson is not even close to his current? project or his current productivity is like more of a top 125 guy or is he so, full transparency i don't know where he is in the rankings i actually try not to get bogged down in like oh this guy's ranked this spot through five games just because like Doesn't matter. on the cosmic scale of time that's like a sneeze so um you know the first like five ten games is more about weighing what i projected coming in versus their actual sort of on-court fit and production without looking at like oh he's top 80 so far because that sample is just so small that i i i don't like putting those in my brain and having it anchored um so to me clay thompson came into the season as like a late round pick for some three pointers i don't think the efficiency is coming back even playing off the two guards that he's playing with um, and to me, he has not been a must draft, must roster guy in 12 team leagues and nothing I've seen so far has shaken that. Um, and I know that not being invested in Clay Thompson means there's going to be, you know, those two hot start, two uh, hot games right out of the gate. Like I won't be involved in that. I won't be part of that. And that's fine with me. Like I, well, I'm, I'm just aware that that will not be part of my menu, but I also don't have to start him and then get like seven points on two for nine shooting. You know what I mean? So. You know, it's hilarious is I, I think I hear the landscapers preparing their actions. So we're going to speed this show up, folks. And uh, we're going to look at the week ahead. But uh, Clay Thompson's got four three pointers a game under his belt right now. And that's it, probably. You know, that's it, basically. And not touching the ball at all. Yeah. So that goes down to three. And, you know, he's down into that top 100 range. And if it goes to 2.6 or something, then you're down even further so this is a great sell high moment for clay i love clay i love his fit on dallas uh it's just not probably gonna happen for him beyond the late round value yeah. uh let's uh, look know, at the week ahead let's do it oh i, I thought there, there was definitely another clay 
clay take coming at that point. Oh, there was, but it was going to be stupid, and Andre would have to edit it out. So, well, the great producer Andre Limush loves editing his name out, so we're gonna just mention it fifty times. Censor it. I, I've got a counter on my end. That's three. Okay. Uh, quick trivia. Buddy is the most three pointers made this season so far at twenty four. Two players from the same team are tied at in second. Who are they? Peyton Pritchard and Jason Tatum. Mm, that's a really good guess. Oh, oh, let's go. Oh, that honestly, that that sound smells like collusion to me. No, that, I I know like, that I write up Peyton Pritchard way more than I want to because the opinion never changes. So. Uh -huh. Well, I'll tell you what, this this is why people who do blurbs are the best analysts in fantasy basketball, because you're all over it. Like you're literally in the in the trenches and, and getting those reps and you just know what the answers are just flat out. So that's why yeah, I love as long what you as do Andre here. is not asking me about guys who played in like 1973. Um, I, I like that's my when Doc and Rick, that's when they get their That's that's their edge. It's like yeah. they know all that stuff like it's the back of their hand. I don't know. Anything that happened probably prior to like 1986 yeah. or something. If it and, came out uh, before the Goonies, I, I didn't. I don't know about it. Yeah, you know, and Goonies and then Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. Um, <laughs> and, and again, I was I was I was trying to make the point. It's like this is why I think it's really important that you know places like Sports Ethos and Roto World and Roto Wire and other places that Roto Baller that do blurbs. I think it's really important that <clears throat> we don't lose that as a, a basketball culture because. That's where the real analysis is done. And that's where the real value is for, uh, you know, folks, you know, in the fantasy universe. It's like, you know, that that's that's the gut. That's the guts. That's the heartbeat of everything. And you're right in there. And it shows when, you know, Jason Tatum and Peyton Pritchard are the top second tied for second players uh, shooting the three ball. All right. Let's uh, move on to the week ahead before this. The landscaper is going to start ripping that uh, that that. Uh, whatever it's, I guess it's the blower or the, uh, the edger, it's going to start happening. It's going to just completely wreck this show. So let's get into the week ahead. Who's got the good schedules. Are you already eyeballing some streamers? What's going on? Uh, well, see streaming is going to be weird next week because uh, Tuesday is a day off for everybody because of election day in the U S everybody mm -hmm. go out and vote. Um, go do that. It's important. Um, and then as a result, Monday is also a full slate. You have 15 games. So all 30 teams are in action which means in a practical sense, nothing really means anything until Wednesday because um, everyone has the same schedule Monday and Tuesday. So it's really Wednesday and beyond. Um, so overall, you've got a, like only three teams play – three or four teams play three games. Let me pull it up. Uh, who is it? Yeah, Brooklyn, New Orleans, Utah, and Washington only get three games. Everyone else gets four, and you know everyone else is on a Monday. So um, it's, it's pretty packed. Thursday has three games. Saturday has four. So every other every other day with games is just loaded. So there's not going to be a ton of streaming opportunity. Um, if you can, the guys you'd want to target are Utah, Chicago, and San Antonio players because they get those the double pack on Thursday and Saturday when you'll actually have lineup spots. Um, so those would be my choices. If you have to stream anyone, those are the guys that are actually going to be, you know, usable. Everyone else is just like you're picking them up and then they're on your bench anyway. Um, that was Utah, who, and uh, San Antonio? Utah, Chicago, and San Antonio. All right, let's go through them one by one, and we'll just kind of do a little rapid fire. Yeah. Uh, who do we like and who do we not like? So Utah, it's a lot of a lot of Good bottom luck. of the roster stuff. Like, Good are you luck. getting in on Kyle Filipowski? What's up? I mean, it depends what league size you're in. 16 teams, that, you know, maybe. Uh, okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't drop anyone that's, like, going to be, you know, top 200 for him but depends how bad you want to win this week i guess uh yeah i just don't know about the, the long-term kind of fit there but worth the kick of the tires i'd rather have mobo of course um it all comes back yeah, well, to that mobo. just goes without saying any but, question is answered that way by the way yeah so yeah i mean filipowski interesting that he's getting the start but uh once marketing comes back i think he's going to kind of fade it seems like the jazz really want cody williams to get the taylor Hendricks spot um, I'm gonna totally totally fair. I'm gonna stipulate that Kessler is just on teams. Clarkson 
probably on teams, but there's a lot. I guess it's easy to say go get Jordan Clarkson if you've got a streaming slot. Yeah, like yeah, if if you want to. Well, he got hurt last night. It. He has left heel pain. Oh, so who knows? Okay, all right. Maybe Colin Dang Sexton it. will be starting again. Well, and there have been a lot of drop Colin Sexton questions. Are you? I mean, let me phrase it to you this way: Do you think Colin Sexton is going to produce any differently than he did last season? Maybe a little less, but not by enough to make me think that you should drop him. Yeah. Okay. Here's the hard one. Okay. And then John Collins, like he should be must roster. Yeah. yeah. Even if he's not starting, he's clearly the guy getting the stats out of that vacant yeah. forward spot. So. A lot of people have been asleep at the Collins thing. And I think he even gets traded so he can have a better last third of the season if they go full tank there. Um, so the one that is interesting, given the injury to Taylor Hendricks, is Bryce Sensible. Hmm. Do you have any interest whatsoever? Like, and let me even move it to this. Do you think that there's any chance that he's even fantasy relevant in a 30 team or a 20 team or, or a 16 team league? 16 and 20, yeah. Maybe not right now. I just, I don't see him getting enough shots with Jordan Clarkson and Colin Sexton um, and even Keontae George all in the lineup. Like, Sensabaugh doesn't or hasn't to this point done a lot besides hit some threes when he's shooting well. And it's just like that's it's hard to crack that shot share while the Jazz still have all these guys healthy. I mean, Taylor Hendricks being out sucks, obviously, but he's not a guy that's going to like, oh, I'm going to shoot 15 times tonight. Like Taylor Hendricks kind of stays in his lane and, and does productive stuff just by being himself. Um, so the minutes are there. I don't know if the stuff that makes Bryce Sensabaugh relevant is going to be there yet, but down the line. Yeah. I'm going to slip us into uh, San Antonio here and uh, I'm, I'm going to just let you know that you were not able to get Julian Champagny from me. That's okay. I, I wrote him up as the sleeper last year and he delivered for me. So we're good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, Champagny was great in his summer league. Yeah. Like I was like, Oh, that guy might be good. And then he yeah. just sort of slowly got better. He's like that mold of player that I just personally really like where they just do a little bit of everything and you know they're just good. Like him and Dean Wade, if I could have those two guys in every team, I would I'd die a happy man. Well, when just, I was looking at the, the Mobo numbers, um, see where he ranked, Champagne's right where I had him in the B150, which is yep. at about 100. And yep. getting about 25 minutes per game. It's been a little light lately, and I think people don't, treat Champagne as if he's a top 100 guy. I think he's going to no. finish inside the top 100. I think he's going to need some help to do that, but just the way that the Spurs have operated with like random injuries, uh, I, I think he's got a shot at it. Um, if you have him now in a standard league, I would maybe consider looking at the wire, seeing what's out there. Like I would, I would swap him for Mobo if possible, just because Devin Vassell is loosely expected to come back in the next two weeks. And I think that, Eventually will be Champagne's starting spot going going into the ether. Um, but, you know, Vassell is no lock to stay healthy for forever. And uh, Champagne has clearly established himself as a guy who's just good. Um, like the Spurs will play you if you're helpful. Um, and sometimes you're Blake Wesley and they play you if you're not. So, uh, yeah, I, I like Champagne's game. I think he's a, he's a good player. And uh, my general overarching rule when I think about adding someone is like, is this guy a good player or is he just kind of crap and, and just getting minutes because the team stinks and they don't know what they're doing. Uh, and he's a good player. And I think the Spurs do know what they're doing. So um, definitely, I think he'll be relevant in like 14 team leagues all year long. I think there's going to be a little bump when Vassell gets back and up to speed and this brief window of time where all the main guys are actually healthy together. But uh, as soon as someone goes down, it's pretty much champagne. He's always the guy that gets the call. Yeah, um, a couple things here. I think uh, Champagne keeps this current valuation of like about 110 in nine cat leagues. Uh, I he, he keeps that as his baseline, like going forward like that. But that might not play in your league. You know, if you're only playing top 75 guys for your value, then then obviously that's not going to cut it. But if 110 in a nine cat league or 130-ish in an eight cat league plays for you, I think that's there all season long. That's that's my guess. And I do expect there to be a small dip when Vassell gets back. 
um, and that might be the window for folks to jump back in. Um, he's getting about 25, 26 minutes per game right now. I think that if there's injuries or maybe he just keeps climbing the ladder and they want to win and they want to be competitive, maybe that goes up to like 28 uh, this season. And then you would have a little bit extra margin there. And that would be good for you. Um, Andre in the chat is cracking me up. I don't know if he who? did a player. Who in the chat? And Andre Limush, okay. who is the, our intrepid, intrepid producer. You know, at first I was calling him Lamos, which was a very lame way to say his name. Then the, the the lots of comments came in, especially from Portugal. And, and then I, I started getting the name right. It's Lemouche. And Rick Campbell got it right on the first try, by the way. That made me very mad. Made me, made me realize that he's the professional and I'm the guy that's, you know, just learning the ropes over here. Um, and then uh, he, he's, he's talking some other jazz right now. I'm not going to get into it. But the, he puts out a list of what I believe is his ranking of these players. He's got uh, Keon Ellis first. And I don't want to turn this into Keon Ellis episode. I feel like I've covered that on the show enough. Feel free to weigh in if you want, Panda. But he got Keon, Dan Penny, Dean Wade, and then Mobo. Okay. He says this isn't his order. This is not his order. Okay. I take it all back, Andre Lemosh. I think we're at 13 now, by the way, Panda. 37 to go. Um, all right. So the question was posed to me, though by the great Andre Lemos. Would I flip Champagne for Mobo? What would you do, Panda? I would, just with Vassell coming back. And then also, um, I'm, I'm a clinger. I like the guys that I pick because I trust my early valuations. Like I'm not, I think I've made like one trade in like the last six years. Like I do my work in the draft and then on the waiver wire. So for me to like make moves, Sometimes you got to rip off the Band-Aid and, and let go of somebody that you feel that you're way ahead of the curve on, that it just takes forever to get there. Um, obviously, he's there right now. But for me, that's kind of the – that would be my one roster spot. Where I'm like, all right, there's the one I can play with. Everybody else is kind of dialed in until they stink it up and got to hit the bricks. Um, so, yeah, it's like opening up flag. that one mental hurdle of like, here's a roster spot you can play around with and take shots on long-term upside guys. So I think Mobo has more potential in the long term than Champagny. I think Champagny is probably going to be more consistent. Um, but with that last spot, and it depends on how your roster is built, obviously, and, and what you're looking for with that last spot. But um, the way I build it, I'd probably take the shot on Mobo and, you know, a little bit less in, in the near term, a little bit of a bumpier ride, but maybe down the line he becomes significantly more impactful. So that's just how I would play it. Yeah, I think Mobo, if, if things start, start going real well, there's going to be a big Mobo fever, and then it's going to be hard to get Mobo. Whereas Champagne, he also might have the lull in the next, say, four weeks. So you could probably figure it out where you get both if you had to drop one or the other. And and I also think that it, it's it's getting worse, I think, now. But, like, you have to get ahead of the curve to win. Yeah. Our readers are constantly messaging us questions that are designed to be ahead of the curve. And you get a lot of folks that are just sort of sitting out there and waiting. And they're like, okay, I'll tell you that they're worth picking up when they're already picked up in your league. Yeah. <laughs> Add Dyson Daniels. Yeah. Right. Like it's, it's. Well, but the, so, see, yeah, it's, you just, you just never know who's on the other side of the screen. Right. Cause I did this week's waiver wire thing and Dyson Daniels was still available in like 35% of leagues on Yahoo, which is just an ungodly number. And it's like, you know, I, Hey man, I don't know what your league is like. I, I gotta say it just to cover my bases. So. Right, right, right. It's there. well, that might be the, that might be good research in the sense that now we know 35% of Yahoo leagues aren't paying attention, you know, or they're like, like just six teams. <laughs> there is that the, the old six yeah. team. <laughs> I have an eight team league and I want to do a five player trade. Um, like, what's sure, your, do it. what's your question or what's your out. answer? Um, okay, so the Mobo versus Champagne, because we got a lot of we got a lot of both for sports ethos fantasy squads. Um, I too would drop Champagne to get Mobo because upside's everything. And while I love Champagne, I don't think that he's going to produce on a per game basis more than say like top 80. I just think he's gonna be a solid top 100, 110 guy as as normal, and then play a lot of games and sort of just stick around. And uh 
but but yeah, that the, the Mobo thing. What's two steal? What's the two combined steals with a lot of points and rebounds and a good field goal percentage? And maybe he even hits free throws. I mean, that we're talking like what top fifty, top forty. Yeah, and you might not get that for a little bit, but when you get it, it's going to be good. Right. If you're in head to head, it's right during your fantasy playoffs. And yep. You know, if you compile that throughout the year, like we'd be looking at Mobo drafted at three hundred in a lot of leagues and and i was embarrassed that i didn't have him in standards or not standards in my in my high stakes leagues i was embarrassed looking at the film and knowing that you knew about him and that, that the toronto raptors beat writers have been talking about him all all preseason that i didn't have him on my squads i'm embarrassed i'll just say it but i digress um what else okay so we had uh chicago or, or, or maybe I cut San Antonio. Sure. Is there any other streamer from San Antonio that you uh, think is a smart pickup, like Castle? Do you think people have dropped Castle yet? I'm sure people have. I, you know, he doesn't. He doesn't inspire joy in me at this point in time. But you know, go for it. If you need assists, knock yourself out. Right. It's just I, the last couple of games. Chris Paul has has uh, looked he's like put a stamp on. Yep, he's looking like Chris Paul again. So you know, obviously that's going to drag Castle's numbers down and. You know, that won't last, but, it, you know, it's just one of those things because of the way the schedule is, if you really need assists, like, you're welcome to do it just because you're not going to have any other streaming options. Like, I don't know why half of the week is your your lineup is full. The other half, it's going to be mostly empty. So, yeah, if you have someone that's not going to play at all that you don't think is going to be top 100 guy for the full season, you might as well get Castle in there just if you want to secure the week. Um, I, the I'm, private, not, I'm not against it. The private chat's I'm not for it, but I'm not against it. Vote for me. <laughs> Private chat's going nuts over here because it's just questions. And then I also think Andre Lemos is waving the white flag. He doesn't want us to keep saying his name. He told us that he's not editing it out. So we don't need to get to 50 anymore. So there's that. There's there's a question that uh, he's he's asking, would you, Mike, have Mobo over Eve Misi for Dynasty? That was a question we got in the last episode. I think it's a really fun one. Who do you I'm like better in no. Dynasty? I would take Missy. You would? I would. And not just because I've been shouting about Eve's Missy as a sleeper all draft season long. Um, just fantasy-wise, like I think Mobo needs a little more to happen for him, whereas Missy's always going to be able to lean on like the two blocks a night. Mm. Um, so it's just a different style of production, right? It's You're going to get good value, but the shape of it's a little bit different. So like Missy, I I don't think he needs to ever become a twenty eight minute a night guy to be like a twelve team option. If he gets sixty minutes a night, he's gonna, you know, six rebounds, like one point six blocks, and a sky high field goal percentage. Like we know that works already. Um, so if that's kind of what you need from your dynasty roster, go right ahead. Like I think he's got better odds of being consistently productive. I think Mobo needs to sort of show continued improvement. And also have roster spots open up for him in a way that maximizes his potential in terms of volume. So um, no wrong answers, just kind of depends what you're looking for and, and what you're after. But for me, I just think in a vacuum, the way the question was phrased, uh, Missy makes more sense. I'm going to take the other side, but I completely get it. Like that block value is one of the most stabilizing things for a fantasy value. And it's funny because blocks can kind of be unstable, but if you're a young player, and you're getting those blocks right now, mm -hmm. there's a good chance those blocks aren't degrading anytime yeah. soon. Well, here's the other thing, and I've said this like 50 times already in, in writing, so if anyone, if I say this and then it, it rings a bell for you, you know who wrote what you were reading. Um, but like the Pelicans have spent two years basically trying to get rid of Jonas Valanciunas, and they're like, we want someone who's athletic, who can like be a lob threat and protect the rim and just has bounce, and it's like, well, you got rid of Valanciunas, you added Daniel Tice and Carlo Matkovic, who is basically like stuck to the floor in the Adriatic League. So like who fits what you want that you've been talking about for two years? Like, and they went right to him. Yeah. Like as I was hoping they would like, you know, Daniel Tice is a fine, solid player, but like he's not what they've been saying they want, you know, and, you know, Carlo Matkovic's not coming through that door, brother. So, uh, yeah, I mean. Just was it, that a, was that a Rick Patino mixed with Hulk Hogan? 
well, let me tell you something about the Cardinals, brother. Um, Andre, you have to edit that out. No. Andre <laughs> Lemos will not be doing any editing. Never, he says. Uh, he also said that he doesn't inspire joy in me will be the episode title, and I don't like that. I think this episode title is the all about Mobo show. Mobo Mania. Mobo Mania is running wild, dude. Dude. You guys don't know how much, like when we do work meetings around here, a work meeting with Panda lasts five times longer than it was scheduled for. And it's just this, it's like constant. Oh, it's just random crap. Yeah. And uh, eventually we get something done. Maybe about. random crap should be the episode title. Uh, I don't like that one because it's mobile forever. And uh, okay. whatever, whatever dribble drabble you just did in a Hulk Hogan voice. Hey, I hear he's doing well. Yeah, let's look up the now to take a big sip of hot coffee and see what Hulk Hogan's up to these days. <laughs> okay, so but streaming for the last angle on streaming with San Antonio, yeah. I do think like if Champagne is available and if like Castle yeah, is available, go for them and you are streaming. Yeah, I like I mean, take a shot, right? Yeah, you know, I mean, look, even if it's only for a week, right? Like if you add them, you get your bonus games this week, they might help you win, and then if you aren't thrilled with what you get, you drop them for someone else next week. Yeah. And, and I think that we've got the valuations it's from us and kind of where we think these guys, you could just print it. Um, like <laughs> we've got the valuations, but here's a spot where you can add and get the, the streamer benefit from it. If you're on the fence, like those two guys in particular, because castle, I'm not a big castle guy for fantasy value this season, but I do like him as a player. Yeah. And I do think that eventually he'll be good. Um, well, it's not probably going to happen soon, but you could at least, mark your spot and, and in, in case it does start happening then you get in on it um let's move to chicago before we wrap this up um surprisingly i was laughing we had three topics on the board coming in this show and i knew that we could make three topics go forever um but we're at the 50 minute mark and we do got to go and somehow those landscapers weren't doing any work out there so yay we get to do this without the uh noise in the background but chicago in terms of streamers like who <laughs> good luck have fun yeah, not no, nobody on the board for you. Um, I mean, with Lonzo out, like if Zach Levine's out, you can do Desunmu or Desunmu. Sorry, um, if he's listening, I apologize. Uh, other than that, I mean, I, I've always been partial to Patrick Williams. Just again, people can sense that I like the guys that just kind of float in and like, oh, here's five rebounds and a steal and a block and like maybe two three pointers. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at, and that's where I stop. No. Well, I mean, Jalen Smith, but he's been kind of banged up. So, um, you know, that's of, of like that, outside of, of the that streaming group. news, that's the disappointing yeah. news. Yeah. I think people wanting upside have been looking at Jalen Smith thinking like, okay, when Vucevic is gone, if that happens, yeah. mm -hmm. that he would be the guy that could maybe reach up and get you top 75. Yep. I'm um, on board there. I mean, he's already outlasted uh, Buselis in the rotation. So I'm still on board. I just I don't think it's going to happen in the near future. So. It is. Io Dosunmu. No. Yeah, we'll, we'll count it. Did you? I'm looking at the judges, and yes, that is. And, and that that was and that was a streamer recommendation there, folks. I, I yeah, like if Levine is out. I wish they would go back to like old Io running the point nine ten assists a game. They did it for like a week, and because uh, well, yeah, they, they had like six it. guards. <laughs> eh, yeah, the team's never uh, not had like four point guards that should all be playing. So. While we have you on the Levine front, let's say the shoulder thing's not a big deal. Like, yep. and then he's just back. Like, where are you with Levine? I mean, he looked pretty bouncy to start the season. And then two of I was all over it in, in drafts. I like, again. So you leaned into that. Yeah, here's the common thread. Like, a lot of people sort of outside that first round, people get drafted to be like the very best version of themselves. And a lot of times you get guys like Levine where there's obvious flaws that just fall way too far. Um, and it's like, I know Zach Levine can outperform where I drafted him, even if like a couple of things go wrong. Whereas like guys that get drafted 10 spots ahead of him need to be perfect to, to hit that. So I was all about Levine, um, in, in around his general ADP. So, you know, we'll, we'll check it this out. Work, it doesn't work. He's, right? he's, he's got four turnovers a game and I'm looking at his nine cat rank right now Four four turnovers a game. He's still inside the top 50. Yep. It's 
23 points, 3.4 trades, 6.4 boards, 2.8 assists. That's an interestingly low number, but that makes sense. Like you got other guards that can handle and he can kind of get to sort of pick and choose his spots. 51% from the field. That's after a two of nine shooting night. Yeah. Um, Well, the other big picture thing here is that like, look, he wants to be traded. The Bulls want him to be traded. mm -hmm. Do you know what makes that happen? Is him playing really well in a big role. Like them having the load manage Zach Levine does not increase his trade value. It doesn't help him play better. Like the only thing that gets everybody to the ultimate end goal is him playing and playing well. So um, where he was going in drafts, it made total sense to take a shot. My God, I wish we could do this for four hours, but we got to run. We got to run, unfortunately. So uh, any last parting thoughts before you leave the show known as Fantasy NBA today? Um, We kept it on the rails. I'm kind of disappointed. <laughs> Maybe. That's very debatable. I think no, I was going to try to talk Lamos about the Costco have. guys. I was going <laughs> to get us over there, see what, what people think about that. Wait, wait you were going to talk Costco on the show? The Costco guys, not Costco itself. Who are the Costco guys? Oh, we'll have a we'll have a long talk. No, 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 no. I want thirty seconds on who the Costco guys are. Uh, they just make TikToks rating the Costco food items. It's, I mean, I don't know. Is it spectacular? You, you haven't Is heard it about the like the great Jonathan Mobo? I'm. I didn't hear what you said. I was thinking about how you couldn't possibly have heard about the Rizzler. <laughs> I'm not doing that look him up question, after. Andre. I'm not doing that listener question, Andre. Not not yet. Not yet. Uh okay, they take they, they rate the, the products. That's what they yeah, do. on a boom or doom scale. A boom or doom. Oh, yeah. I you know what? I want a part of that. I go to Costco all the time and I got some great hats. I got cheese crackers that I eat. They're the uh the the Sonoma Creamery tomato basil. That's the best thing yeah. I've ever had. Then I got the uh, the peanut butter cups. I forget the name of the brand, but they are like three carbs and 70 calories, and they actually taste better than I had a Reese's Pieces for, for Halloween, and it sucked. It sucked. Really? There was too much That's... sugar in it. it it's, it's like you can tell that it's crack. You don't want that. You want the, the Costco peanut butter uh, healthy versions. Okay. All right. They're not well, you sponsoring know what, Andre, us. I, I'll stop Andre's, saying the brands. Yeah. Well, you know what? Unofficially, today's episode is sponsored by the Snack Factory Pretzel Crisps. The <laughs> finest snacks you can buy. Uh, I'm not saying anything about that. that that'll that do it. See, okay, we waited till the uh, 57th minute to get this thing off the rails. But I'm that's trying like to get us money, man. I don't have. know what you guys are freaking out about. You know what? Maybe you should be in charge of marketing. I'd like to thank the great Andre Lemos, whose name we've mentioned 37 and a half times. And, and Snack uh, Factory. And Snack Factory. I don't know who you are, but send us money. This has been and Fantasy NBA crisps. Today. The finest snacks money can buy. <laughs> Presented by Pretzel Crisps. The finest money that pretzels can buy. I'm Aaron Bruski. <laughs> <laughs> this is my Pasador. This is how every work meeting we've ever had goes. Uh, presented by Bet Online. this show is indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, be well. <laughs>